If you haven't done so yet, make sure you pause the video and first attempt to solve the question on your own before listening on. In part A, we are asked a few things, but the first one is for the time constant of this charging circuit. Now, the time constant for an RC circuit is simply equal to the resistance multiplied by the capacitance. Now, the resistance was given to us as 47.0 kilo ohms. Notice that we're going to have to convert that into the standard unit of ohms by multiplying by 10 to the power of 3. That would put the unit in ohms. And then for the capacitance, we have 32.0 microfarads. And to change that into the standard unit of farads, we would need to multiply it by 10 to the minus 6. We could then pick up our calculators and multiply these two quantities. And when we do that, we get 1.504. And then the unit of the time constant will be in seconds. And so this is the correct answer to the first part of part A. We also need to calculate the maximum charge on this capacitor. Now we know that for a charging capacitor, the charge that's on one of the plates of the capacitor is equal to the capacitance times the potential difference that is supplied by the battery, multiplied by this term here in parentheses. Notice we have the time constant r times c present in this equation, and then t would represent the time that has passed since the circuit began to charge. Now, in order to reach the maximum charge, we need the time to approach infinity, essentially. What that means is we close the charging circuit and we just wait for a, a very long time until the charge reaches its maximum value. Now, if we insert a value of infinity for the time, we would end up with e to the negative infinity divided by our time constant. Now, of course, if you divide infinity by a finite amount, you're going to get infinity, so we can remove that. e to the negative infinity is equivalent to 1 over e to the positive infinity. This is like saying we're dividing the number 1 by an extremely big number. And when we do that, that approaches 0. So basically, this term drops out, and we are left with the charge on the capacitor, again, after a very long period of time, equaling the capacitance times the potential difference that is supplied by the battery. Here, we would just have 1 minus 0, but 1 minus 0, of course, is just 1, so we can omit that. So we need to simply take the capacitance, which we already noted was 32 times 10 to the minus 6 farads, and multiply it by the potential difference that is supplied by the circuitry. And we were told that that is equal to 5,000 volts, so we can plug that in as well. And when we compute this, we're going to get 0.16, and the standard unit of charge is coulombs. So this would represent the maximum charge that will be present on this capacitor. And oftentimes, because it's the maximum charge, they'll replace the lowercase q with an uppercase Q. That just represents the maximum charge. So if you paid attention carefully, you will realize that the maximum charge is simply equal to the capacitance times the potential difference supplied by the battery. So that's an equation that is worth knowing. Now, we also know that for charging a capacitor, that the current can be expressed as a function of the time that has passed since the capacitor began charging by use of the following equation. Now, it turns out that when you're charging a capacitor, at time zero, the current is at its maximum level. And then as the capacitor charges up, the current that's flowing through the circuit actually will gradually diminish until eventually it approaches zero. So again, note that at a time of zero seconds is when we have maximum current. So in this equation, we're going to go ahead and plug in zero for the time. Here we have the potential difference supplied by the battery, which again is 5,000 volts, divided by the resistance, which is that 47 kilo ohms. Let's not forget to convert that into ohms by multiplying by 10 to the power of 3. And then over here, we're going to have E raised to the power of negative 0 divided by the time constant. Now, of course, 0 divided by anything is still 0. So we basically have E to the 0, but E to the 0 is just 1. And so that term actually drops out. So the maximum current can now be calculated. 
And since it's the maximum, they will often change the lowercase i to an uppercase i, and then we can divide out the potential difference and the resistance. And when we do that, we get 0.106 amps. So this would be the maximum current that will flow through the circuit. And again, that happens at time zero. And then the final part of part A asks us for the charge as well as the current as a function of time, but we've already stated that earlier in this video. So these two equations right here, which again apply for a charging capacitor, are the equations that give the current as a function of time as well as the charge as a function of time. And finally to part B, which wants us to find the energy stored in the capacitor when it is fully charged. Now there are a few equations that we could use, but one of the equations tells us that the energy stored in the capacitor is equal to its charge squared divided by two times the capacitance. Remember when it is fully charged, we have a maximum charge on the capacitor. So rather than using the lowercase q, we can use the uppercase q. And we determined the uppercase Q earlier in the problem. That had a value of 0.16 coulombs, which we can plug in for that maximum charge. And then we'll divide it by two times the capacitance, which was the 32 times 10 to the minus six farads. And when we work this out, we end up with exactly 400 joules. And so this is the correct answer for the energy stored in the capacitor when it is fully charged. Thanks for watching this video. If you liked it, please click the thumbs up and also subscribe so that you can stay tuned for similar videos. Remember that you can send in your own question to the email address that's shown on the screen and I'll do my best to post the solution to it here on YouTube.